Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless gary there is some terrific news coming out of a very strategic part of the middle east we're talking about the nation of iran what is going on there good things are going on in iran because despite all the political well, despite the yeah. well the political is maybe one reason why it's so good uh, yeah. many people are coming to christ i mean it's probably one of the fastest growing uh, moves of christianity in the world today thank you ayatollah for that because yeah. what it's doing it's driving people away from islam his oppression and towards other faiths and uh, Christians are stepping in and saying, we have the answers. So we're seeing uh, many people baptized, coming to faith in Christ. Here's the good news. There, there are a couple of missionaries that say, look, when missionaries can't get in there and Christians can't share the gospel, God is finding a way. He's appearing to them in dreams and visions like we've never seen in 1,400 years. I mean, that's astonishing. Marzi Amirizadi, great to be with you. You were born and raised in Iran, which is a Muslim nation, but you became a believer in Jesus. How did that happen? We have amazing God. No one can stop him uh, from approaching people. And you know, is that Iran is a Muslim country. Mm -hmm. No one are allowed to practice any religion except Islam. There is persecution of religious minorities. But praise God, more than 20 years ago, I found Jesus Christ and I gave my heart to Jesus. And it started with a dream and he started showing himself through my dreams. And finally, someone told me about Jesus. and. Uh, a lot of things, miracles happened, and I gave my heart to Jesus. We've heard stories over the years of Muslims coming to faith because of, a, a because of dreams. Yeah. What was your dream, exactly? Yeah, I was praying to the sky. Suddenly, a white horse came down, and it says, uh, sit on my back. And when I obeyed, the horse took me to a city where um, very radical Muslims were practicing Islam and at the beginning they couldn't see me or the horse uh, and I, I was just looking at them and suddenly God uh, revealed their true faces to me and all of them turned to savage features. As soon as they saw me they tried to attack me and take me off the horse and the horses started running to save me from uh, those uh, people and I remember I held his neck like this mm -hmm. and while he was uh, riding uh, I felt amazing love pouring from that horse pouring into me that I never experienced when we were safe um, I, I awoke and but when I awoke I couldn't believe that how much God loved me um, and that love that I experienced in my dream I couldn't compare it with any love in this world and I remember for weeks, almost every night, I was crying and I wanted to go, I wanted to die. Because um, I believe if we taste a little of God's love, that makes us insane. We mm -hmm. can't believe that how much God loves us. And that was the beginning of my journey with Jesus. But in that dream, I didn't know about Jesus. And later, as I mentioned, one of my friends who has converted to Christianity, she told me about Jesus, that he died on the cross for our sins, and uh, he saved us. He's the Son of God. He's our God, which was totally unbelievable to me. Because uh, in Islam, uh, they teach you that Jesus was only a prophet. That's why I got curious. I got Bible, and I started reading. I did some research about other religions, and miracles started happening. I had the experience of being held, uh, healed um, in the church the first time that mm -hmm. I attended. And then the, the day that really changed my life was the day that I was sitting alone in my room and I was praying. Suddenly I received uh, the fire of the Holy Spirit, the fire of God on me, and nothing was in my control. And suddenly my hands raised up like this and I started worshiping God in other languages that I never uh, mm -hmm. uh, learned. And uh, I could not understand what kind of languages is, uh, they are, but I could 
fully understand what I was telling to God. And while I was um, worshiping him and crying, suddenly I had a vision. I saw Jesus right in front of me in white clothes. And beside him, there was a big throne which was covered with shining gold. And I couldn't believe that I could meet my God that close and I, I could experience his love. I could feel his presence all around me. And that took for hours from late at night until early hours in the morning that I couldn't control my mouth. It wasn't uh, in my control. And I was keep worshiping him until early hours in the morning that it stopped. And I felt that God had remo removed the curtain before my eyes. Mm. And after that, I dedicated all my life to Jesus. Real quickly, in the last minute that we have, what is fueling this growth? You alluded to the idea of political, the, the frustration with the politics of Islam. What else is fueling the growth of Christianity? Well, I, I think it's also, it's, it's not just the politics, yeah. but it's people are searching for something other than Islam. Islam is so oppressive to them in Iran, they're getting fed up with it. They, ha they do not have a good life. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 8.32 And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It is the politi uh, politics, the economic, but also God is finding a way in those oh. dreams and visions to reach them. So are Christians. Yeah, it's awesome. Can God give visions to people today? Yes. Does God give visions to people today? Possibly. Should we expect visions to be an ordinary occurrence? No. In the Bible, God spoke to people many times by means of dreams and visions. Examples are Joseph, son of Jacob, Joseph, the husband of Mary, Solomon, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Peter, and Paul. The prophet Joel predicted an outpouring of dreams and visions, as we read in Joel 2, 28 and 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. This was confirmed by the Apostle Peter as we read in Acts 2, 17 and 18. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, and on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. It is important to note that the difference between a vision and a dream is that a vision is given when a person is awake, while a dream is given when a person is asleep. In areas where there is little or no gospel message available, God is taking his message to people directly through dreams and visions. This is entirely consistent with the biblical examples of dreams and visions being used by God to reveal his truth in the Old and New Testaments. If God desires to communicate his message to a person, he can use whatever means he finds necessary. A missionary, an angel, a vision, or a dream. God can also give visions in areas where the gospel message is already readily available. There is no limit to what God can do. We must be discerning when it comes to dreams and visions and the interpretation of them. We must keep in mind that the Bible is finished and it tells us everything we need to know. The key truth is that if God were to give a vision, it would agree completely with what he has already revealed in his word. Dreams and visions should never be given equal or greater authority than the word of God. God's word is our ultimate authority. If you believe you have had a vision and feel that perhaps God gave it to you, prayerfully examine the word of God and make sure your vision is in agreement with scripture. Then prayerfully consider what God would have you do in response to the vision, as we read in James 1.5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. God would not give a vision to a person and then keep the meaning of the vision hidden. In scripture, whenever a person asked God for the meaning of a vision, God made sure it was explained to the person as we read in Daniel 8, 15 through 17. Then it happened when I, Daniel, had seen the vision and was seeking the meaning, that suddenly there stood before me one having the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Uli, 
who called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid and fell on my face. But he said to me, Understand, son of man, that the vision refers to the time of the end. There are many people on YouTube today that claim they have had dreams and visions from God. While there may be some who have actually had a vision from God, there are those who are attention seekers or simply deceived by Satan who have not. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Taiwan often compares itself to David facing down Goliath. The small island is just 100 miles off the Chinese mainland. China claims it's a breakaway province. And the CIA believes China wants to be ready to invade Taiwan within four years. Taiwan says Chinese fighter jets fly dangerously close to Taiwanese airspace. And its warships encircle the island almost every day. Tonight, Taiwan's foreign minister with a stark warning. I think China might be repeating what we saw as the origin of the Second World War, and we have to be careful. How much risk is there that one of these daily incursions could start a fire? Uh, it is possible. a real conflict? Yes, it is possible. If you look at the history of war, uh, there are plenty of war out of uh, accidents, out of inadvertent, inadvertent accidents. <laughs> The U.S. supplies Taiwan with weapons. Still, the island's 210,000 troops are no match for China's 2 million. But Ukraine was outgunned by Russia, too. And Ukraine's resistance has inspired Taiwan. We have seen the very brave uh, Ukrainian soldiers uh, defending their territory, defending their freedom and sovereignty. And that is something that we want to learn. <laughs> But the people in Taiwan are not mobilizing for war. This week were the annual dragon boat races, and the crowds were the biggest in years. You cannot live in fear. You have to keep going with your life. Emily Wu is a podcaster and says what makes Taiwan unique from communist China and a target is its democracy. What's it like when China does these flyovers and sends its warships nearby. It's intimidating because what if one day it's just not an exercise? The foreign minister told me he does not believe the threat to Taiwan is imminent, but said it is, quote, apparent and increasing. Luke 21, 25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ his nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Breaking news from France overnight. Fires erupting during a third night of protests after the deadly police shooting of a teenager. Tom Sufi Burge has the latest from a suburb outside of Paris. Tom, good morning. Yeah, morning, Mary. We're in a residential area just north of Paris. Have a look at this school. You can see how badly damaged it is right along here from an arson attack. Violence erupting this week across France after the death of a French pre teenager of North African descent who was shot dead by a police officer on Tuesday morning. Last night was the third and worst night of violence so far. 600 people arrested, more than 200 police officers injured. The 17-year-old was shot by police. It's claimed he initially failed to stop his car when asked to do so by traffic officers. Prosecutors have now put the officer who allegedly pulled the trigger under formal investigation for voluntary homicide. President Macron calling the shooting of the teenager inexcusable. Racial injustice is a driving factor behind the protest, but many French commentators believe the cost of living crisis is fueling things too. A government crisis meeting is underway right now. There are calls for President Macron to bring in a state of emergency. There are nighttime local curfews already in place, 
to try and quell the violence. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. So it's a psychedelic summer. According to a recent Wall Street Journal report, Silicon Valley tycoons like Twitter Elon Musk are self-medicating with psychedelic drugs. The report says Elon microdoses ketamine, a drug once used as a horse tranquilizer to treat depression. And according to Joe Biden's brother, the president is, quote, very open-minded about normalizing psychedelic drugs for medical treatment. Watch. He is very open-minded. Hmm. Put it that way. I, I okay. don't want to speak. For, I'm no, no, I brother understand. To brother, right? Right. Yeah. Brother to brother. Right. The question is, is the world, is the U.S. ready for this? This after the journal Addiction published a report claiming that magic mushroom use has tripled in the past two years among young adults. Tonight, Jesse Waters Primetime is declaring San Francisco has hit rock bottom and they need an intervention. This isn't just about San Francisco. This is a warning shot for the rest of the country. San Francisco is officially now a no-go zone. In San Francisco, just outside. Are you alive, bro? I'm just checking. I <laughs> gotta stop smoking that in front of the kids, man. You got the kids right here, man. The federal building in San Francisco, California. Uh, as you can see, there's a fentanyl genocide happening in our community. San Francisco turned itself into a cemetery. San Francisco doesn't enforce the law. San Francisco doesn't even allow you to cast judgment. How dare you think children shouldn't have to step over urine-soaked junkies on the way to school? Urine-soaked junkies have rights too, you know. In San Francisco, junkies have more rights than you do. And what's your drug of choice, brother? Uh, heroin. Um, crystal bath. Meth and heroin. We saw a woman who was pregnant just now. Yeah. What is she smoking? Diddy. She's smoking fentanyl, and she's eight months pregnant. I don't know what they're putting in this stuff. I don't know if it was aliens. I'm not trying to sound crazy. This stuff no, 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 it's fine. must be um, causing all these like psychological breakdowns. I don't have to be on the streets. I just choose to be. You just choose to be? A lot of people are out here because they want to be out here. Drugs are illegal. Defecating on the streets illegal. Pitching a tent on the sidewalk's illegal. But junkies are allowed to break the law. All of these laws. Broad daylight, I saw someone get raped. I was raped, bullied, picked on, oh. stripped naked, robbed. And somebody gets stabbed. I mean, like someone robbed me with a machete today of all my stuff. Getting the head with crowbars and bats. I saw you get shot in the back of the head. Somebody getting shot? Do they live? No. You will end up getting hurt out here. The other homeless people are like your worst enemy. These people do not play out here. Besides, I have weapons. I have, I have my protections. Okay. What kind of weapons? <laughs> bats, hatchets, knives, mace, tasers. More and more people are taking drugs globally. That's according to a United Nations report, which says the number of those who inject stimulants is 18% higher than previously estimated. In Vienna, there's been a significant increase in drug-related deaths. Nearly 300 million people globally used drugs in 2021, according to the latest UNODC World Drug Report. This figure is 23% higher than the previous 10 years. The most common addictive substance is cannabis, followed by opiates, amphetamines, cocaine and ecstasy. Consequently, there are nearly 40 million cases of people who suffer from drug use disorders. That number has skyrocketed by 45% in the last 10 years. Only one in five people are in treatment. The Apostle John used a very interesting word in the book of Revelation to describe society in the last days as we read in Revelation 21.8 and 9.21. But the cowardly unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And they did not repent of their murders, or their sorceries, or their sexual immorality, or their thefts. Sorceries is the Greek word pharmakia, which means the use of drugs, potions, and enchantments, poisoning, 
pharmacy, by extension the occult, witchcraft, by implication, the remedy, the cure. The actual word that John used for sorceries is the Greek word pharmakia. John did not choose to use the Greek word for an actual sorcerer, but rather he used the word to describe what those types of people did in the first century. Sorcerers made magic potions and compounds to ward off spirits and also for physical healing. The Greek word pharmakia is where we get the modern day word pharma or drug. We also get the words pharmacy and pharmaceutical from that original Greek root word. What the Apostle John saw in his vision of the world in the last days was a society ruled by drugs. When the Apostle John saw his vision of what society would look like in the last days, one word came to his mind, pharmakia. Never in mankind's history has there been a time where the use of drugs was so prevalent in a culture. And never has there been a time when such drug use actually had broad support for its legal use. A combination of Canadian wildfires and northerly winds is blanketing a hundred million Americans in smoke. In Cincinnati, some brave the outdoors on foot, in cars, and on the water beneath a skyline shrouded in haze. The picture was the same in Indianapolis, on Michigan's Mackinac Bridge, in Milwaukee where smoke fills the skies, trapped by warm summer temperatures, and in Chicago, where this week Shirley Ann Manson, singer of the band Garbage, ended her performance early with this apology. I have COPD and I have asthma. And as a result, this kind of weather is like really dangerous for me. So we have cut our shorts, our set slightly short. And I just, um, I feel so bad about it. But I just want everyone to know that here, local leaders are urging residents to wear masks or stay indoors, especially if they have respiratory problems. Well, last night I really was coughing a lot. When I, now I'm a little more used to it, but I'm a bit hoarse, as you can maybe hear. At times this week, Chicago's air quality was recorded as the worst of any major city in the world, an iconic landscape with no defined outline. This is the clearest Chicago skyline has been for three days. On the air quality index, it's been over 200 for the past 24 hours. Health officials say at just 150, staying out here all day is the equivalent of smoking seven cigarettes. There are now about 500 wildfires erupting in flame across parts of Canada. Half of them burning out of control, one the size of Rhode Island. And the fire season has just begun. We are fast approaching a time known as the tribulation that Jesus says will be the worst time in human history as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. We are currently witnessing events that will continue to become more frequent and more intense until God pours out his final judgments on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. The world is witnessing unprecedented extreme weather that will carry over into the tribulation period, and the news headlines prove it. There's no respite in Mexico from the sweltering heat wave. Health authorities say 112 heat-related deaths have been recorded since March, almost three times as many as last year. Those working outdoors are most at risk, but they are finding ways to adapt. A high-pressure weather system called a heat dome is trapping heat and humidity over Mexico and the southern United States. The northern Mexican state of Nuevo Leon has been hard hit, with 64 deaths and record high temperatures soaring to 45 degrees Celsius. There is a fairly intense heat wave with temperatures higher than normal, higher than those recorded in recent years. The high temperatures generate changes in our bodies, especially between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. when the most intense heat waves are registered and can cause dehydration in people. Weather experts are warning that another heat wave is on the way. The immediate forecast for many Mexicans is finding any way they can to beat the heat. Scorching heat is gripping parts of the United States, with officials blaming it for at least 13 deaths in Texas, calling it unprecedented. A hospital in Houston saying they have a 30% increase in heat-related cases from the same time last year. It's really, really hot. So tomorrow we're actually leaving the country, going to Canada. So we get a break from the, weather. the National Weather Service stating that extreme heat events will become more frequent and intense in the coming decades due to climate change. There are two key prophecies concerning Jesus' signs of his coming and the end of the age that are crucial to discerning that we are living in the last days. The first prophecy is found in Matthew 24, 8. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. 
As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. This is how end time signs such as wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes will occur. They will become more frequent and more intense as we get closer to Jesus' return. The second prophecy is in Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Notice Jesus said when these things begin to happen. Jesus was saying that when you see a convergence of Bible prophecy, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. We are witnessing not only the convergence of Bible prophecy around the world, we are experiencing the frequency and intensity of these prophetic events as well. The temperature is even prompting the U.S. Postal Service to allow earlier starting times for letter carriers after a letter carrier died last week from triple digit heat. I don't know, it just seems like it's getting hotter and hotter. At this hospital in Uttar Pradesh, doctors treat patients who have symptoms of sunstroke. The northern Indian state is in the midst of an intense heat wave, which is fast becoming a threat to public health. The extreme heat, which has seen temperatures reach up to 46 degrees Celsius in the country's north and east in recent days, is suspected to have resulted in more than 100 deaths since June the 15th. This resident's son is among the dead. Right after he vomited, his body temperature became so high that we took him to the emergency room at the local hospital. It was very busy there. There should have been facilities such as air conditioning for the patients, but there were none. Officials in the state are investigating the deaths which are suspected to be due to the heat. Power outages have been making working conditions even tougher for medical professionals. Out on the streets, business owners are struggling to work in the heat. Some fear its consequences on their livelihoods. The temperature these days ranges from 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. Due to this, we're facing problems such as fewer customer visits, insufficient juice sales and a challenging life. Climate experts say that such extreme weather is becoming increasingly common in countries like India. They're calling on the government to be better prepared for the repercussions of heat waves. The world in the very end will be consumed and destroyed by fire, as we read in 2 Peter 3.10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Heavy rainfall in Chile has resulted in floods and landslides in central and southern parts of the country. More than 400 people are homeless and a further 37,000 are living under blackout conditions at the moment. The Chilean National Disaster Prevention and Response Service has issued an evacuation order for residents living near flooded areas. Authorities reported 2,500 people are still isolated in the upper parts of the country. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16:8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. 
believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. See, call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.